Good morning, everyone. Good morning. If you don't mind, stand on your feet. Let us give God some praise. All right, all right. I'm going to say that again. Let us give God some praise this morning. That's much better, much better. How many of you know he's worthy of the praise this morning? How many of you know that he's worthy of the glory as well as the honor? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. <clears throat> Let us exalt his name together. Let us petition God in prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you so much for being so good to us and watching over us. We thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity. Some of us were not selfish with ourselves, and we brought ourselves to the house of worship, and we thank you for that. Now, God, we want to take this time, and we want to dedicate it to worshiping you, for we recite the scriptures when it says, for the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. You also say, clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands. So God, enter into this place of worship. Give us a worship experience. Let us leave better than we were before. Let us forget all about our troubles and concentrate on you. We thank you right now. And it's in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, bless the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house today? Hallelujah. How many of you know that God is great and he's greatly to be praised? Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together like this.
bless your God. Come on, bless your God. Your healer, your protector, your way maker, your everything. Come on, bless him one more time. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, can we worship him this morning? Come on, lift up your hands right now. I just want you to begin to just forget about what has happened this week, where it's happened up into this moment. But if I were you, I dare you to lift up your hands and begin to proclaim the name of Jesus. Because he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above everything that you can even imagine or think. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Exceedingly. Oh, yeah. Abundantly. According to the power that worketh in you, in you, yeah, God is able to do just what he said he would do.
no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. The Lord's going to see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. Trouble won't last always. It's only
find the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. You're seated in majesty. Yeah. You are the risen King.
Thank you for who you are and all you have done in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the worship experience that we've had so far. And God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who will guide us the rest of the way. I thank you, Lord, that you showed up this morning because we can do nothing without you. So God, just for a moment, I ask that you take this sinner and give me the strength to deliver sermon. Wrap, tie, and tangle all us up that we will receive a word. And Lord, I say again, now may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto thine sight, O Lord, our strength, and we thank you for being our redeemer right now. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Let us give God a big hallelujah, thank you, clap praise right now. Amen. Just for a moment, I'm going to let God preach his word to us. But just for a moment, if you could turn to God's gospel written by John. John, the gospel of John chapter 12. Amen. And this morning, we shall look at uh, eight verses, verses one through eight. The gospel according to John, starting at verse number one. Amen. Verse one reads, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here at a dinner was given in Jesus' honor, Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a, about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house, watch, watch this. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't the perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, 
but because he was a thief as keeper of the money bag he used to help himself to what was put into it. Watch the master here, y'all. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Amen. God's word for God's people. For the next little while, I want to talk from the thought, letting it all hang out. Letting it all hang. That didn't catch somebody right there. Letting it all hang out. Letting it all hang out. I want to start off by saying, I don't know what side of the table you are on uh, or uh, uh, what line you have driv uh, uh, drawn in the sand when it comes to your collegiate uh, team. Some of us in here this morning, we feel like winners. And some of us feel the agony of defeat. I wondered what makes... Uh, athletics or college collegiate sports so wonderful. I cannot speak on basketball because I'm not a basketball player. I cannot speak on hockey, golf, nor tennis because I, I am not even mediocre at those sports. But there's something that comes on every Saturday around 11 o'clock and it's called ESPN Game Day. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. ESPN game day, if you take the time to sit down and not wonder but watch, you see collegiate college students running around with painted bodies, with all kind of makeup on, waving banners, hollering, we are number one, go team. You hear the band in the back playing, and people are just acting foolish before the game. I say to myself, I know their mamas and daddies did not send them to school and paying such a bill for them to paint themselves from head to toe and to walk around with crazy hats and to shout and to cheer all day long. But I begin to get excited the more I thought about it. Even though I'm not in the stadium, I feel like I'm at the game. And what I said to myself is that what the students and the, and the fans are doing, they are preparing the minds of those who will enter the stadium to be great and grand cheerleaders for their teams. Right in the midst of all that cheering, you got future doctors walking around with painted bodies. You have future lawyers shouting at the top of their lungs. You got future nurses and and politicians that's running around the stadium crying, we number one. At that moment, what they're doing, church, for their team, for their school pride, they're letting it all hang out. And the thing about it is, church, if you go back and you reflect on what I just said, it reminds me of a favorite piece of scripture that I love to read. When my soul feels tired, when I feel like giving up, when I feel like giving in, when I cannot feel the presence of God nowhere around me, I love game day, which is Sunday. And I love the way the writer puts it in Psalms 100 and the fourth. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Now the thing is this morning that if you don't have the fire of the Lord already in you, you shouldn't wait for someone to put the fire in you. 
If you don't know that God is good already, you need to know now that our God is good not some of the time, not all the time. I don't have to paint my body and I don't have to go crazy like the college fans, but when I come to church, I ought to be able to let it loose for the Lord. I ought to be able to express how I feel about my God. I ought to be able to clap my hands without folk giving me the side eye. I should be able to run and shout and say what people asking me what's wrong with me I ought to be able to thank God just for another day's journey do I have a witness up in here without people thinking that I'm crazy all I'm saying is is that Sunday is our game day and when you get up in the morning and you begin to think about the goodness of the Lord you ought to say God I want to thank you for another day's journey I want to thank you for waking me up anybody ever been like that and look here here if you want to know about the crystal colors that God is trying to put in your life, somebody ought to say, he showered me with his blessings. He helped me to get up this morning. He clothed me in my right mind. He made ways. Matter of fact, when I walked to my refrigerator, I got a little food in my refrigerator. I didn't put my shoes on my head, and I didn't put my trousers around my neck. Look, game day is Sunday, y'all. And on Sunday, I need about five of y'all that say, I don't mind letting it loose for the Lord. I don't mean to be disrespectful about the theme or the topic, but every now and then we can become so conservative in the church that we miss the presence of the Spirit of God. Every now and then, I ought to be able to throw my hand up. And if you on the road with somebody who got it all together and don't need the Lord like you do, you ought to tell them, excuse me for when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my game day is Sunday. When I see where he's brought me from, my game day is Sunday. I need about five of you that's not ashamed. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor my game day is is my Sunday. That's the wrong neighbor then. They didn't respond. Look at your other neighbor and tell them, my game day is my Sunday. Because if you've been through all the hell I've been through, if you've been through all that I had to face, how dare you to hold me into, into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Can I get somebody say, God will and, and, and let me say this I don't want to mess up the mind of folk because those who were brought up in the 60s and the 70s uh, letting it hang out was a carnal terminology that you use but we're moving it to a spiritual realm to where the church cannot fix I fascinate its mind on what we think is right and don't do what God say is right. Come on, somebody. So, you got to let it hang out. You got to let it all loose. If you don't believe me, take this journey with me and I'll leave you alone in a little bit so we can all get to where we got to go. But to understand chapter 12, I got to take you back to chapter 11. 40% of John's gospel deals with Jesus going to the cross. And he, he manifests the glory of Jesus going to Calvary greater than Matthew, Mark, or Luke. He lets us see what we call uh, the divineness and the human part. That Jesus is not a demigod, but he's God and he's man. So now, here Jesus interacts in chapter 11 and let me give you a Bible study real quick. We're going to go. You know the story that there's a delay. And then after the delay, there's someone's dead. Then someone's decayed. Then there's doubters. And then there's deliverance. Y'all follow me? First of all, in chapter 11, there's a delay. Y'all know the story. Jesus hanging out somewhere. And he gets a word that your friend by the name of Lazarus 
is sick. Uh huh. And Mary and Martha request that you come to the hospital and see about him. The language is, is that Jesus says we're going the other way. The disciples remind him, Master, did you not hear the report that Lazarus is sick? Jesus said, no, nah, he ain't sick. He sleep. He dead. Well, what, 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 wait a minute now. He's dead, yeah. And we'll get there when the father say it's time to go. That's the delay. Then he moves to the dead. He does not even get into the city of Bethany. And here come Mary and Martha. You know the language. If you love the brother so much and you cared for us like you said you did, Jesus, if you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Folk trying to push you into things that God ain't called you to yet. Jesus says, wait a minute, wait a minute. All this stuff y'all see me do. I've raised the dead on a good occasion. I fed the hungry. I've even opened up blind eyes. And you think I can't handle this? But look, Jesus, if you were here, our brother would have not died. Then hold on to this little piece of pericomy because I don't want you to move because we got to go back to it. But Jesus said, you're going to see him again because I am the resurrection. H hold on for that. Then you get the doubters. You know how folk walk around you and they tell you what won't happen and how you should do it this way. Let me tell you something. There's going to always be some critics when you're trying to do some work for Christ. Help me out, somebody. There's going to be somebody in the background throwing shade. There's going to be someone in the background throwing salt on the mission and the message that the Messiah has given you. Anybody ever? Matter of fact, it ain't even church. Have God ever put something in your heart? Let me tell you this. You got to be careful who you share your vision with. You got to be careful who you talk to because there are a bunch of doubters that don't want to see you make it. Do I have a witness up here? here? Now, that don't get me wrong. There's a group that's cheering you on, but I'm just trying to make you aware there's another group that wants to see you fail. But somebody ought to say right now, if God be for me, who shall be against me? If God called you, if God ordained it, if God set it aside, you ought to tell your neighbor right now, I may be going through hell and high water, but if God has already called it, it has to happen. So what you ought to do, quit hanging out with those who are always doubting what God is doing in your life. Some of y'all are just a few credits away from graduation. Some of y'all is just an ink pen away from owning your business. Some of y'all are just a little bit away from owning your own car and your own house. But you're listening to the doubters. And the thing I want to tell you is, if they don't have nothing to invest in you, you ought to say, bye Felicia right now. You ought to say, thank you very much. May the Lord watch between me and thee. Do I have anybody like that up in here? And you ought to look at yourself and tell self, if I got to go all by myself, good God Almighty, I'll go all by myself. So the doubters, it's there in 11. It's all right there. And then Jesus shows up like he always do, has a little talk with the father, and says, now, Master, my brothers and my sisters, Mary and Martha, and, and some other kinfolk, they die here crying because Lazarus is dead. Now, Lord, I don't do this to benefit myself, but that they may know that I have power because of who you are in my life. Watch out now. He says, let him rise. Jesus simply says, roll a stone back. And the doubter says, why? He's been dead for a while. And I want to stop right there and give you just a little point right there. I don't care how bad the situation is. 
God can raise some dead situations in your life. Come on, somebody. He can raise it. It's proof. And watch this. All he has to do is just say a word. He don't have to go by and get some olive oil and smack it all on you. He don't have to twist and turn and make thunder and lightning fall from heaven. But somebody ought to say, just by his word, God can make a change. Do I have anybody like that up in here? That just by a word, God can turn some things around in your life. Just by a word, God can cause the seas to stop roaring. Just by a word, he can cause your enemies to behave. Just by a word, he can make the crooked straight. Just by a word, watch this, anybody ever had any weeping in the night? Just by a word, God can turn your weeping into joy. If you just trust it him and the Bible says that he spoke the word he called Lazarus and Lazarus came out so now I'm almost done with you that takes us as we move the scene Jesus is now preparing for Palm Sunday and he comes back to Bethany somebody has prepared a meal, a worship service for the Lord to thank him for what he's done for Lazarus. Watch this. The scene has been set because it's custom that women did not sit with men during the fellowship. So Martha is serving now. The men are sitting at the table. Jesus is there with Lazarus, and the scene is that now Jesus, for in a few more days, will be crucified on a cross. The brothers have hung out with him for three years. Mary and Martha have seen Jesus do mighty and wonderful works. But Martha is a servant. Can I stay right there for a minute? God is looking for some servants in the house. Come on, somebody. Everyone can't be the chief, but we can all be Indians in the house. Servant doing that which no one else wants to do. But how many of you take pride in serving the Lord right now? Come on. Take pride in See, the thing is, I feel, and I'm going to say me in my spirit, feel that folk are caught up in positions and titles in the church today. Mess around and don't call somebody what they feel like they ought to be called. Amen. Mess around and don't call him doctor, or don't call him bishop, or don't call him deacon, or don't call him trustee, or don't call him... Man, you got a fight on your hands. But how many of you want to be known as a servant this morning? The Bible will not say, well done, thou good and faithful pastor, or well done, thou good and faithful ursher, or well done, thou good and faithful choir member, or well done, thou good and faithful church member. But it will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't know about you, but that's what I want to hear when I get to heaven. I want to give God my best right now. Whatever it is, somebody say, I want to give him my best. If it's holding the doors of the church, I want to give him my best. If it's teaching Sunday school, I want to give him my best. If it's singing on the choir, I want to give him my best. If it's playing the instruments, I want to give him my best. If it's showing up on Sunday morning, somebody ought to say, I want to give him my best. I want to let it all hang out. I 
don't want no one to stop me from holding my hands up and opening my voice and talking about the goodness of the Lord. Now, you may not love him the way I love him, but he's been too good to me to sit back and don't say nothing. I want to serve him this morning. From my pinky toe to the hairs on my head, I want to serve him this morning. Even though I can't hold a note in a bucket, but I still want to serve him this morning. Do I have anybody in the house that has a serving spirit and tell yourself he's been too good? Let it all hang out. Matter of fact, when you serve God the right way and you leave the place that you were serving, people ought to know that you've been there. You see what I'm saying? It ought to be some residue that you've been there. So, so, so Martha is serving. Somebody say Lazarus is there. Now, I got a problem with Brother Lazarus. I know in chapter 11 we saw him in the grave. But I call Lazarus visible but not vocal. I have a problem with that. And when I look at Brother Lazarus, it seems like in this situation about when the oil she was poured, he should have been the first one to say something. He's visible, but he's not vocal. He's at the supper, but he ain't saying nothing. He's, he, if anyone had a testimony, <laughs> it should have been Lazarus. Come on, somebody. I'm going somewhere. I may have to stop right here and leave it alone for, for a minute. Uh, if anyone should have been shouting at the table, it should have been Lazarus. If, if there was anyone that was, should have been waving their hands and talking about the goodness of Jesus, it should have been Lazarus. But he's visible but not vocal, y'all. Can, can I stop right quick? We ask God to move in our lives. We ask God to bless us. We even ask God to heal these old bodies of ours. And God keeps his end of the deal. He heals our bodies. He regulates our minds. He makes ways out of no ways. He opens doors for us. He even shut doors for us. And as soon as we get the blessing, some of us become visible, but we're not vocal about what the Lord has done. Do I have have a witness up in here we'll, we, we, we'll sit right there like we all cute and all sophisticated and won't say a word about the Lord but I don't know about you this morning I've been in some dead situations I've been in some stuff that should have killed me and I dare me to come to the house of the Lord and be visible but not vocal I got to tell somebody if y'all don't mind I want to end this thing right now, but I want to say right now, I got to be visible as well as vocal this morning. I want to tell you what he done for me. He woke me up this morning, and he started me on my way. He helped me when I couldn't help myself. He did, he did things, he did wonders, and he did miracles. Is there anybody in the house that's not ashamed of what God has done? did that for you. Uh, if you don't mind, grab your neighbor by the hand and tell your neighbor right now, I got to be visible as well as vocal. Uh, I got a testimony. I got to let it loose. I got to say something. I may not say it like you, uh, but I got something to say, boo. I want you to know uh, I haven't always been good. I haven't always been righteous, but when I think Think of the goodness of Jesus and where he brought me from. Do I have anybody that's not crazy, but you got your right mind and you want to look at your neighbor and tell your old neighbor, I got some oil in my hand and I got to pour it out right now. I know you're going to talk about me, but I got to pour it out. I know you don't understand, but I got to pour it out. I know I may be ridiculed, but I got to pour it out because I want to tell you uh, 
I may not have this chance again, but when I talk about Jesus, I want you to know he's still my lily of the valley. He's still my bright morning star. He's still my way out of nowhere. He's still my Aaron's rod. He's still the root of Jesse. He's still the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's still the third and the fourth man in the fire. He's still the one in the lion's den. Can I get somebody to just to be vocal about who Jesus is in your life? Can I tell you a story? He came down 40 and two generations. He went to a cross and there he died. I said he died. Good God Almighty. He died. But somebody ought to say, I got to be vocal because the same Jesus that died on a Friday, he got up with all power, not some power, but all power, all power, all power in his hands. Now, if you're not too cute, will you stand on your feet and tell your neighbor, I got to let it go. I got to let it loose because he's been too good. Has it been good to you over here? Has it been good to you over here? Has it been good to you over here? Let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything, good God, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord, say yeah. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Let it all, let it all, let it all. The problem is you have, and I'm going to say you, and I put us in it. We have conditioned our minds to the legalism of law to what God's supposed to be in church but I'm going to give you two words and if I'm wrong I'll leave your pulpit there's two words in the Bible you need to learn the first one is tabernacle and the second one is temple y'all hear me Jesus preached in the temple God showed up at the tabernacles all right then from 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 Genesis to Leviticus Deuteronomy God shows up in the tabernacle you are tabernacles because whenever God wants to download a word in you, he stops you right where you are and begin to talk to you. Anybody ever done that before? And God just starts speaking to you and folk think something wrong with you and you over there talking about, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, I appreciate you, Lord. Oh, God, you're good to me. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you're good. Come on right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I receive it, Lord, in the name of you. Anybody ever had that happen to them? You are tabernacles. You right in the middle of the storm and God shows up. The temple is the place of where we come and worship and we talk about the goodness of the Lord. Everyone in this house, whether you be 8 or 80, ought to have a testimony of where the Lord brought you from and let it go. See, check this out. If I don't have enough wood with my fire, if God has been good to you during the week, you ought to let me borrow a few of your logs and let's set this place on fire. If I'm right, Deacon Henry, you can't start a fire with wet wood. It can't happen. But you got to be dry 
to the fact when the fire hits you, that when the fire hits you, somebody ought to say, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Revival is not annual. Revival is when God needs you. Jesus said this. He said, let her alone or leave her alone. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. When you've done your best, when you've taken, that was one year's worth of wages that she poured on Jesus. And when Judas is, when the Judas has come in your life and asked you why you've done that, you ought to stand up and tell him, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Because, see, I'm preparing myself for my blessing. I'm getting myself ready for my breakthrough. You don't want to, why, why you keep paying your tithe and you keep giving to the poor and you keep, because you don't know like I know what the Lord can do for me. And, 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 when, and when those doubters and the Judases come in your life, I dare you to open your mouth and tell them, leave me alone. Can you do that for me? Tell them to leave you alone. Leave you alone and leave your blessings alone. Leave your increase alone. Because y'all don't, see, you, you can't be natural trying to operate supernatural with God. Am I right? Am I right in here? You are, you're trying to handle some supernatural stuff through the natural eye. Break the box. One more thing and then we're going home. And it says when she broke that box, Deacon Martin, that the aroma of the perfume filled the whole house. I, I don't know who I'm talking to. But what does your praise smell like right now? What does your praise smell like? What does your worship smell like? It ought to be a sweet aroma that it fills the whole room. When you walk out of the church, somebody ought to sniff you and say, oh, I can tell you've been to church. I can tell you've been worshiping. What does it smell like? Break open the box. Let the oil flow. And when folk ask you what you're doing, just tell them to leave you alone. And watch God work it out. Can I get about five of y'all to agree to that? How about five more to agree? So before we go, if you are able, because we're changing the atmosphere, if you are able, I want you to stand on your feet. And I want you to let the aroma in this church building, I want the aroma of 290 Springdale Drive to be such a sweet, sweet smell that folk may ask, what must I do to be saved? If you don't mind, if you're able, if you're able, help me, help me right now to break open the box and let the oil of God flow right now. Open your mouth and thank God right now. Bless the Lord if you're able. Yes, let it fall fresh. Right there, let it fall, let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. Some folk, some folks see your glory, but they don't know your story. They don't know all that you had to go through to get where you are right now. But you had to make some sacrifices just to get where you are right now. And let me tell you, don't let no one 
Write the final chapter of your book. Don't let no one, but you let the all flow. And watch God work it out. As our praise ministry gives us a song, I'm going to ask that the leadership, that you would take your places. And somebody, if there's anybody that desire to be a part of the body of Christ, I we invite you. If you let me, God, where would I be? If you let me, God, where would I be? If you let me, God, if you desire to be a part of our family, we invite you. If you let me, God, if you desire to be a part of this church family, we invite you. you to hold on to a piece. Y'all remember that? When Jesus said in chapter 11, I am what? Come on, Bible study. I am what? The resurrection. I am the resurrection. Who also believe in me shall live again. Yes, God. And let me tell you something. I know there's eternal life, but God wants us to live now. He wants us to walk in the abundance of his blessings. Yes, God. He wants us to live. There's no need to work and labor all day. And you don't live, Deacon McNeil. And God wants us to live good. He wants us. That, there's nothing in the rule book that says that you have to be a Christian and be poor. Y'all hear me? But let me tell you something. The time is coming. And this is my prophetic gift right now. For some of y'all, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. You're working with wicked folk. But watch God turn that thing around. Y'all hear me? I don't know who that's for. Folk. Don't want to attack you, but they want to attack your anointing. Lord. But I promise you, if you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, somebody say he'll work it out. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask that you gather here at this altar. I'm going to ask my chairperson, uh, Deacon Holmes, to lead us in our prayer right now, if he don't mind. I want him to, but I, I need some folk that's not going to be afraid to break open the box and let it all go and let it all loose right now. in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We come once again, my Father, 
in your name. Thank you, O oh Lord God, for your grace. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord God, for your love. Thank you, Lord God, for your understanding. Thank you, O Lord God, for your gifts. Thank you, O Lord God, for the talents. Thank you, Lord God, for the blood running warm in our veins. Thank you, Lord God, for the activity of our limbs. Lord, we can't do nothing without you, Lord God. We just can't thank you enough. We can't praise you enough. Lord, you've just been too good to us. Better than we've been to our own selves. We ask you, Lord God, to continue to keep your loving arms around us. Lift us up, Lord God, when we low down, Lord God. Strengthen us when we are weak, Lord God. Lead us to your house, Lord God. We do the things that are just pleasing in your sight. Lord, we know crazy things are going on in this world today. But we know, Lord God, you're still sitting high and you're still looking low. You still have our powers in your hand. If we just reach out, Lord God, go up to the hills which come as our help, Lord, we know it comes from you. And we come thanking you right now, Lord God. We come here right now, Lord God, with a spirit of expectancy, Lord God. We're expecting a word from you. We're expecting blessings from you. We're expecting strength from you. We're expecting uplifting from you. Lord, we're expecting, Lord, you to carry us down that road that you have us to go and give us the tools we need to do the work when we get there. We ask it right now in your name, Lord Jesus. But we know you can, if only you will, Lord God. Bless the sick and the afflicted, Lord God, in our congregation, Lord God. Someone may be bereaved right now, Lord God. We ask you that to soften their hearts, Lord God. Soothe their mind, let them know that everything is going to be all right, Lord God. Some people weren't able to make it to the church service today, Lord God. They're laying on their sick bed. But, Lord God, you are still in the healing business. We ask for a special healing right now, Lord God. Touch them, Lord God, and lift them up, Lord God. We ask forgive us all of our sins and our transgressions. Lord God, bless those who transgress against you, Lord God. But we know one day it's all going to be over down here, Lord God. We won't be able just to praise your name no more down here. But we're going to go up a little bit higher, Lord God, and glorify your holy name. We ask you, that's the Lord God, to bless our pastor, Lord God. Bless his family, Lord God, and just lift them up over their weak, leaning side. Look at our leadership, our musicians, Lord God. Touch them in a mighty special way, Lord God. Well, one day it's going to be over. We ask you to save us a place in your kingdom. We can praise your name forevermore. In the name of Jesus, we all say amen, amen, and amen. My prayer is, is that you will find yourself walking in the grace of God, that you will always acknowledge him so that he may direct your path, that you know that he's just not your joy, but he's the center of your joy. And as we pass each other through this week, may we greet each other with these words as well as dismiss with these words. May the grace of God be with you. May the communion of the Holy Spirit, may God himself, who is all-powerful, watch, rest, and rule over us until we meet again. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. Be blessed.